Warriors NRL Fanatics back again today with a video and I'll be doing my Warriors 2021 season review. Let's get into it. So we finished in 12th spot on the ladder at the end of the season with a 6 and 16 record. So that's 6 wins, 16 losses with a 4 and against of minus 173 and on 18 points. Now, the most disappointing games for the season, the first one I've got here is round five versus the Manly Seagulls. That was a 13 to 12 loss at Central Coast Stadium in Gosford. Now, going into this game, Manly Seagulls struggling for form and performances. And look, I thought this was very much a winnable game. Now, normally in the past, I would not have said it would be a, a very winnable game considering it is against the Manly Seagulls. And considering a poor record we've got against them. But, you know, the way the Seagulls were looking going into this year was a little bit um, concerning for them. But also looking like a positive for us because, you know, it shows that they're beatable. But, um, you know, we did start off the game very well. Um, Manly managed to hang in there, you know, with their defence. And unfortunately for us, a DCE field goal... A daily children's field goal, which won them the game, and that pretty much kickstarted their season because you know they needed a win, obviously, due to their early struggles in the season. But yeah, that was that was a huge result for Manly and a disappointing result for us, the Warriors. And yeah, I, I thought that was a game which you know really we um let slip. You know we let that game slip by our grasp because it was a game which we had a chance in. And we were playing very well up to that point, but um, just did not do enough in the end. So, you know, Manly obviously deserved to win that game. Huge congrats to them. But look, we could have done a lot better, obviously. We could have done much better, um, played a lot better. And um, just, yeah, we just didn't do enough. And that was the start of a couple of runs of results that were very close. Now, the season, you know, we were, we were in all these close results, you know, and... This was a close result that's really, really irritated me and frustrated me the most, more than more than ever, you know. And this was the game against the Cowboys in round 12 at Queensland Country Bank Stadium up there in Townsville, 29 to 28 defeat. Yeah, this game really frustrated me. And, you know what, we did all the right things in the first half. You know, we played well, you know, we were, we were chipping away at it and... The game composure from our halves in the second half, and I've got to say, very disappointing because we had control of most of this game. We definitely did. We led the game for majority of it, and we got, you know, the chances. You know, we we should have gone for the field goal first things first. I know people might say it's a bit too early in the game to go for a field goal, but when we're leading, I believe we should have. I I got very very pissed off in the live reaction that I did about this game, you know, I was doing a live stream during the game, and yeah, I went off my head about the amount of times we didn't go for a field goal when we were in front, and it proved proved pretty costly too, because at the end of this game, yeah, look, we had an opportunity for a field goal, Harris Tavita, Chanel Harris Tavita misses it, and the Cowboys come down the other end off the back of a penalty, I believe it was from my memory, and yeah, they slotted a field goal with Valentine Holmes and they won the game 29 points to 28. And boy, the execution, you know, the execution, not only, you know, Harris to me did miss that field goal, don't get me wrong, but we really did not execute properly to set up a proper um, attempt at a field goal. And, you know, that was the most frustrating thing for me in, in terms of this game. One of the most frustrating games of the year for me, and and look, fair play to the Cowboys, don't get me wrong, well done to them, but uh, the Warriors just did not execute, they just did not execute the way they needed to execute, and that's that's um, come down to probably a lack of experience and big moments for sure, but um, you know, no excuses at the end of the day, you know, we just did not execute what we needed to do. Now on to another game which disappointed me. This was more of a heartbreaking result more than a frustration. Was the game against the Brisbane Broncos round 23 at Suncorp Stadium. 24 points to 22 loss. And boy, you know, this game come down to a lot of huge moments. And 
well, at the start of it, we just did not um, look at the races. I mean, our attack was very, very flat. We just did not threaten the Brisbane Broncos at all. And you know what? The Brisbane Broncos, look, I know people will say, you know, you know, they finished at the bottom half of the ladder, but going into this game, they were in some good form, actually. They were showing a lot of better performances. So, look, coming to this one, I never thought it was going to be easy against the Brisbane Broncos at Suncorp Stadium. It usually isn't an easy place to win, and despite Brisbane's, you know, poor start to the season, you know, they were showing some good promising form, and boy, they proved it too. They, they proved it massively. And, yeah, look, in the second half, in my opinion, I believe we were the better team, no doubt about it. You know, we started off well, we got a try early on, we got the lead, we had the lead for the majority of that second half, and, yeah, we let Brisbane back in it, and, you know, in the end, the scoreline showed 24 points to 22. Um, yeah, Reese Walsh, you know, missed those kicks. Um, he copped a lot of criticism and stick at the end of the game, which, personally, you know, as a young, young kid of not young kid who's 19 years old you know what i know people say this is not an excuse at the end of the day it shouldn't be an excuse but uh you know i don't think it was the reason why we lost the game you know i think it come down to it, it may have come down to these last couple of moments you know where we should have done a lot better but i don't think it came down to personally his kicking that lost us the game i think it came down to a few more other moments for me but uh you know you have your off games, and Reese Walsh had an off game with the boot, you know. He was kicking very well up to this point, and it's very unfortunate. It was a heartbreaking result. It was, it was gutting. It was gutting to see, and Reese Walsh, you know, he looked very upset. You know, he was angry at himself, and, you know, it was unfortunate. But, um, yeah, very heartbreaking loss, that one. You know, that was pretty much close to pulling curtains on our season. And round 24 of us, the Canberra Raiders. Now, this one was more of a um, heartbreaking result as well. And a bit of frustration. And we started the scale off very well. We had a lot of possession. You know, we just, you know, we looked like the team that could win by 30 or 40 points against Canberra. Because they weren't in the game at all. And surprise, surprise, you know, a couple minutes to go into a half time. You know, just a lack of patience and attack, you know. Could have had a lot more points. We definitely could. And the Canberra Raiders, they got a try right before the break. And that was a momentum swing for sure. Even though it was one try, it swung the momentum in their favour. And look what happened in the second half. Canberra, you know, they just ran over the top of us. And that result pretty much summed up our season. That ended our slim finals, finals hopes. And for me, this game against Canberra and the game against Brisbane were the games that pretty much cost us a chance of making the finals at the end of the year. Now on to the last one in the most disappointing game, and that was round 25 against the Gold Coast Titans. And look, I know people might say this game meant nothing, absolutely nothing at all. Why are you putting this in your most disappointing game of the season? Well, for me, it's got to be the most disappointing performance of the season for all. You know, that for, it was... It's a non-contest in terms of the most disappointing performance of the season because, look, the Titans were playing for a lot. Don't get me wrong, they were playing for a final spot. The Warriors, you know, playing for nothing, virtually nothing. But I went into this game with a bit of hope because, you know, the last two games, you know, the last two games we come off losses. You know, they were heartbreaking results. And I thought to myself, if we wanted to finish the season on a high, this is the game to do it. And 44 points to nil. We just weren't there. We, you know, this was a game that I went to at Seba Super Stadium. I was there. I did a game day vlog on the channel. Yeah, one of our worst performances. And the attitude of the players I just weren't there from the first whistle. I can absolutely tell, you know, from the first whistle that we just they just weren't there. And the Titans were more desperate on the day, no doubt about it, because they knew what they were playing for. And, you know, once the scoreline blew out, you know, it was pissing down with rain in the second half. You know, I had to take shelter, move seats. And, yeah, it was one of those games which, you know, you just want to sit there and think, you know, why am I here? Why am I watching this? You know, 44 points in the nose. 
absolutely dreadful. It was, you know, the players, you know, lost their patience. You know, they got sent to the Sinman, the likes of Kane Evans and Matt Lodge. Reese Walsh was part of the scuffle as well. You know, he just wanted to get in there and, you know, stick up his teammates. But, yeah, it was one of the worst performances of the year. And that pretty much summed it up for me, you know. The, the players just attitudes like they want to be on holiday already they want to you know go out partying because that's what it felt like for me so moving on to the best wins of the season and boy there's not too many best wins but i've picked out i've picked out two here and the first one's got to be round one against the gold coast titans 19 points to six i thought it was a good solid foundation for the rest of the season a new signing stood out on the day, Bailey Serenin, Adam Fanil Blake, Ben Murdoch, and Southern Ewan Aiken. And we kept the highly rated Titans side to one try. I know the Titans did not show a lot in attack, they didn't really threaten us at all, but still, it's a Titans team which had Tino Farmacilli, David Fafida, two of the biggest signings in the off season. And, you know, there was a lot of talk around them in terms of finals team and that. So it was a valiant effort from us, it was a great effort from us. And yeah, the new signings had a, had a good day out too in round one, which was a huge positive. Now on to the next one. It was round three versus the Canberra Raiders. One of our biggest cup upsets. Uh, uh, sorry, not upsets, sorry. One of the biggest comebacks in club history. Down 25 to 6 at half time. But yes, it felt like an upset as well, if you could say that. Because we were down by a lot of points. And in a place where we generally don't have a good record at, Canberra, you know, we always have a pretty poor record there. And look, the Raiders, you know, um, had a few injuries at the start of the game. They had a couple of players come off due to the HIA. And their bench rotation was limited as well. So that definitely did not help their case. But in saying that, to have a 25 points to the six lead at half time was such a big lead for Canberra. And yeah, we came out in the second half. And boy, I thought to myself... This is going to be a tall order. Let's just hope that they don't get thrashed by 40, 50 points in the second half. That's what I was hoping from my point of view. I did not have any expectations that would come out and win the second half and win the game. And boy, I got egg on my face. And wow, this was unbelievable, unbelievable stuff. You know, we came back and we won it 34 points to 31. Remarkable. Absolutely remarkable. Just could not believe it. No, I was up on my seat cheering loud. You know, it was unbelievable stuff. And yeah, look, you know, the Warriors have had a couple of games like that in their history where they've come back from big scores. And this was one of the biggest and greatest comebacks I've ever seen in our history. And what would be remembered by is that try saving tackle from Roger Tuva Sheik on Jordan Rapana. With a minute to go, the Raiders are like going to score for all certainty and break. Our comeback, and you know what? I had a bad feeling that it was going to happen, you know, after doing all that work to get back in it. And here, yeah, Rapana, you know, he got shoved out of the sideline by Roger Tuvas. Sheik was a huge tackle, was one of the greatest tackles for me of the season. And can't believe that wasn't nominated for one of the try saving tackles of the year for me because no, no matter how biased it might sound, that is one of the greatest try savers I've seen. So yeah, what a great, great win that was. You know, one of our best wins of the year. And, you know, that was probably our only best win of the year, unfortunately. Now, on to the most improved player and standout performance for the season. Now, in terms of most improved player and standout performance this year, it has to go to Josh Curran for me. When given game time, he really stood out defensively and attacking-wise. Look, he didn't have too many games, unfortunately, due to injury and um, suspension as well. So... Look, boy, when he's coming, he's he's done a great job, Josh Curran, and he's had a great season. As for the new signings, you know, you've got to look at the likes of Marcelo Montoya, who's had a pretty good season as well. He's proven me wrong. You know, I wasn't too sure about the signing, but Adam Fanil Blake, he's one of our standout signings of the year. Signing of the year for me, for sure. He has proven why we decided to sign him in the offseason, you know, didn't get as many games like Josh Curran because of, you know, injury. But um, when he's played, you know, he's had a great games and he's never disappointed. And also, he also played along, you know, that um, captain's role as well. So, hopefully next season, Adam Fanil Black can stay on the field. 
and we can get him for all of the games next year. So that that is the most important thing because when Adam Fanua Blake's played, I don't think anyone else has stood up besides Josh Curran and yeah, he's a forward that has had a great season for us in general. Now on to the worst signing of the year. And look, I don't like to single out people, but unfortunately I'm gonna have to, and it's a must because you know there's gotta be there's gotta be a negative, you know, in terms of a player, unfortunately. And look, I've got nothing against the bloke. I've never met I've never, you know, met the guy in person, so he might be a nice guy off the field. But unfortunately, on the field, he has shown less impact, and that is Kane Evans. Kane fold some Evans. Now, when he played, you know, created less impact. Just wasn't the impact we needed. You know, he gave away a stupid penalty when he came on the field. You know, he also got brought up in that controversy around the um, wrist tape. You know, when he brought on his wrist tape, fold some, fold some cunt or something, whatever he said there. So... You know, Kane Evans, you know, just wasn't the signing that, you know, we needed. And at the start of the season, when I heard we signed Kane Evans, also I had my doubts and I was proven absolutely right with that one. You know, too ill-disciplined, you know, he starts a fight, wants to, you know, be that sort of player, you know. It's just a player that we don't need. We need a player that's disciplined, can stay on the field and help us on the way. And he just didn't show that. And look... As you guys know, Kane Evans last week was announced to be leaving the Warriors effectively immediately. So we've released him. For me, I'm pretty happy with that news. Nothing against the bloke, like I said again before. Nothing against the bloke, but um, you know, it just hasn't provided what we needed at the end of the day. So yeah, look, good luck to Kane Evans in England. But um, you know, all I gotta say is just it wasn't what we needed. He, he just didn't didn't deliver on expectations. You know. From club expectations, I didn't have expectations on him, but yeah, from from the club's expectations. Now on to young talent to watch out for in twenty twenty two, and boy, we've had some good young talent this year. Get an opportunity, the likes of Taniella Otakolo, Edward Cozzi, Viliami Valia as well. You know, we've had some some uh, good young talent get the opportunity, and boy, they've they've done well. I think they've done very well in terms of the season but in terms of young talent to watch out for in 2022 and boy I've got a massive rap on this kid and it is Rocco Berry now unfortunately for Rocco he hasn't played too many games this year it's another player that hasn't played too many games probably you know I've I've said a lot of a lot of these players this year they've had less game time but you know he's a good kid that Rock, Rocco Berry is a very good kid you know he's you know, he's he's quite big actually, he's quite big for his size, you know, I thought he was a small fella, but he's not, he's not small at all, and, you know, he can definitely put on a bit more size as well, and I reckon, you know, if he has a big off-season in terms of training and that, you know, we'll see a lot more of him in first grade next year, and hopefully, hopefully he can stay injury-free and play consistent, you know, play that consistent type of footy that will keep him that first grade side for, for many years to come and for next year, so... You know, got to remember as well with Rocco Berry, he's played, you know, less rugby league games. He comes from a rugby union background as well. His dad is a former All Black player as well. So, you know what, he's got, a, he's got his um, talent from the family, that's for sure, Rocco Berry. And, you know, he's got a lot to learn in NRL for the future. And I'm looking forward to seeing how he goes. I did a video about him months ago talking about him being our future centre. So if you haven't seen that, go check that out. But... Uh, yeah, we've got massive, massive reps on Rocket Berry. I rate him very highly. You know, I watched him through the junior system, the under 20s. I watched him through to the New South Wales Cup as well. Boy, you know, he can be a player to watch out for for the future. Another player is Tom Arley as well, and he didn't get to feature in first grade this year, but Tom was a regular consistent before for the Reef Dolphins in the Queensland Cup there. Had a few injuries, but yeah, he had a good back end of the season as well, Rock. Uh, the Tom Ali, sorry. Um, yeah, Tom Ali. He had a great back end of the season, and I reckon he could definitely cover next year in the forwards if we have injuries to senior players, or he can come off the bench as well. I reckon. So, yeah, two good, two, two good young talents coming through. Uh, shout out to Taniela Otakolo, Viliami Valia, as well as Edward Cozy as well. So, 
Boy, there's some excitement there in terms of young players, you know. Also, you've got young players as well playing for the Reek with Dolphins as well. So, you know, got plenty of young talent coming through the system, and I'm looking forward to seeing what they do next year. Now, on to key areas to improve on, and there is a lot of key areas. You've got the bench rotation. For me, in my personal opinion, I believe our bench rotation was not there this year. You know, I believe that... Nathan Brown got it all wrong with the bench rotation. You saw players with less minutes, players with less minutes that should have got more minutes, and players with more minutes that should have got less minutes as well. So, you know, you need to have that consistency with the bench rotation. That's what all the top teams do in the competition. They have the consistency to how they rotate their bench. Look, I know injuries haven't helped their case, but, you know, still, we've got to get that right. And also in terms of our game plan as well and, and attack, more importantly in defence. Now, we've leaked a lot of points this year. We've leaked a lot of points and that's um, a big blow for us. So we need to fix that going forward for sure. And we also need to look at stepping up our attacking game as well. But on to the overall rating of the season. And I had a long thought about it. I had a massive long thought about it for a really long time. You know, I was close to giving us a C, I was close to giving us a D, I was close to giving us an F, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to be as harsh like that, and I'm going to give us a C-. minus. Look, it wasn't a great season, don't get me wrong, it wasn't a great season whatsoever, but considering it's Nathan Brown's first season as a head coach of the Warriors, and again, we had to go through and move around a bit this year as well, you know, we were on the Central Coast, we were on... Yeah, we were on the Central Coast and we were on the Gold Coast, you know, it was a bit of a moving and moving around a lot, you know, it was just, you know, we went in one place for a whole year, you know, it was just consistently moving areas, you know, consistently moving bases and, you know, not saying that's an excuse at the end of the day because we did have a pre-season in Australia this time, so, you know, we didn't have that interruption of the previous season, but still, you know, that definitely played a part as well and also played a part was the lack of players staying on the field you know we had a lot of injuries as well we had suspensions as well you know we had all sorts of things going on this year for us and you know I personally think from my point of view I think C- minus is a fair rating for the year and look next year no excuses I've said it there will be no excuses I've said a lot of my videos lately that there, there's no excuses to not make finals next year we have to be in a position to be inside that top eight and I know what's not going to help is you know now with the likes of Reese Walsh you know the drama of that you know in the off season you know he'll be missing a couple of games and there's still a bit of um ifs or buts around signings you know we haven't really made too many signings we've had you know we've got the likes of Aaron Penne and Sean Johnson coming back which I'm looking forward to seeing next year I think they're huge off season signings I reckon they'll go very well but um yeah besides that look there's still question marks. We'll see in the off-season what happens. But, uh, yeah, that is uh, my Warriors 2021 season review. Don't forget, if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button down below. That will be much appreciated. Oh, a huge thank you guys for the support this year. I really do appreciate it. Also, just letting you guys know, this is not the last video of the year. Myself and Hold the Ball will be doing a collab together again. This will probably be our last collab for the season. We're going to do a Warriors end of season award. So this will be a bit of seriousness and a bit of light hard funniness as well. So we'll have a bit of serious and funniness. It'll be great stuff. It'll be on in the evening. I'll let you guys know the details close to the time. But stay tuned for that. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to doing that with Hold the Ball. And uh, yeah, hopefully you guys can come along and tune in and watch that. Because I reckon it'll be great fun. And also, you know, also as well, in the off-season, there's a lot planned coming up on the channel. You know, the off-season, there'll be a season preview. There'll be predictions. I will be bringing out my predictions for the NRL season in late February. So, from a personal point of view, I think, you know, having the predictions out latest is better than having it out early because you never know what's going to happen in the off-season. But... There's plenty of content, plenty of videos to come in the off-season, so stay tuned to the channel for that. There'll be one more video to come this year, and I think that'll be it. I'll take a, I'm going to be taking a brief break from the channel. Just thought I'd let you guys know that. Um, 
yeah, it's um, been a been a very very long season. A big thanks to everyone who subscribed to the channel recently. And if you haven't already, like I said, subscribe. Hit that subscribe button down below. That'd be much appreciated. At the moment, the channel's at 752 subscribers, so we've reached that 750 mark, which is huge. Thanks to those who have recently subscribed to the channel. Also, don't forget as well to hit that like button on the video. Hit the thumbs up button. That'll be much appreciated to show that you enjoy the content. And also don't forget as well to hit the bell, hit that bell so you don't miss a notification when I do a new video. And yeah, my social media pages are in the description below, so go check them out. And if you don't have social media, I've got an email address as well. But thanks guys for watching this video, and I'll see you all in the next one.